Hello, Prim friends. I wanted to do a video here tonight to give you an idea of what is here in the shop after we had our Valentine heart tag sale. And as I'm walking around, I see that there are still lots of the hearts everywhere. Um, I have not seen where the dealers necessarily have pulled those tags. So if you were not able to come for the uh, if you weren't able to come for the special weekend, I would honestly head on over. So the shop is open from 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock every day except Tuesdays. There's some red transferware and that neat Lennox soap box. I'm going to go a little bit quicker tonight. I hope that's my plan anyway. I do want to do this video as a video of the entire shop. And Seville Antiques is sort of legendary. It has over 5,000 square feet and all primitive early antique style and with some of the accessories that go along with them. That early box, the color just does not come out as well as it is in person. And it does have a uh, engraving there of the initials B, T, H, A, S, S, E, T, and then the letter K. And that has rose head nails. And that is an early, early piece, probably late 1700s. I have a whole little box there of early skates. There's a lovely hooked rug there. My mom is just a fabulous rug hooker. These are all done on linen with that beautiful hit and miss and the bunny for spring. Some nice early bowls, the big lip there on the edge, and then this neat old scoop. I have a couple of these linen pinafore flax linen aprons left. It's a pinafore. It crisscrosses. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Here we go. It crisscrosses over the back. And it's a nice length. It's a nice size for a uh, nice weight and feeling for in the garden or sort of dresses up. You know, if you're just wearing a t-shirt and jeans, kind of dresses that up if you're kind of prepping for a party or is it David T. Smith. Redware Bank. Some neat early Mammy's Bench and a welcome hooked rug also done on linen. Really early quilt, all hand stitched. That neat blue calico. And I know there are a lot of people that like that old cabin there, but it is just too um, too precious, too fragile to try to uh, mail. And that is an antique dovetail corner dresser that I painted the front and then did one of the IOD um, transfers on the front of it with the peacock and the flower design and the glass knobs. So we had that in a guest room in our previous house. Here's a, uh, this is a new piece that I just brought in, like a Chippendale mirror. Love those, love those in the entrance way. We've got a couple, one, two bundles of the tulips left. I think this is one of the short bundles and that one over there is, um, 
one of the long bundles. And I think that's it on the tulips this year. Bowl of stone fruit. And then these are a couple of neat pieces that I've just brought in. A couple of neat match safes. Uh, the one on the left is an early one of, we think it's Columbus. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, reproductions have uh, writing specifically on the back that'll say like Cupid or something like this one. And this does not, this one just has some uh, letters L, B, 13 engraved in the back. And those are cast iron and heavy. You can see the little cupids there. Cupid kissing someone. All right, so in order not to have this video be, you know, a couple of hours long, I am going to kind of give you an idea as you're walking through here what it what it feels like. And I'm my booth is at the very furthest back corner, and we'll come out and go through the front. This is a very unique booth here. Also, these are for the most part very high end, very unusual very rare collectible pieces. Um, just really special. Look at that chandelier in the back there. With the candles. Lovely. Beautiful high boy. Another one here. Some really very unusual. Look at that carved coat rack there with the bear and then the baby bears. Cute. Very precious, very dear pieces here in this in this booth. Oh, and there I would say is another it's a bronze of Christopher, it's Christopher Columbus. It's a nice big red scrub top table there. I love that um, paper mache crow up there. He's a nice one. Nice little table, a little carrying piece there. You can put your silverware and things in it. Sweet little dolls. A cute little sailor suit. Looks like a boot jack there on the corner of that cupboard. Some more stone fruit. And I am seeing pink paper hearts. So I hope you are planning on coming up this weekend. Uh, like I said, the shop is open. We are open six days a week. The only day that the shop is closed is on Tuesdays. dough cupboard the cedar there in the corner the farmers would put the seeds in that little green uh, holder part and then they would plug it into the ground and pull the handles kind of apart and that would push the seed down into the ground They're kind of cute hanging on a wall or just tucked into a corner somewhere Nice grain painted trunk there with a the drawer on the bottom. We 
you're looking for a chalkboard, maybe in a non-high-tech way of leaving yourself or your loved ones a note, maybe your, your um, grocery list, things that you need. It would be cute to put in the pantry somewhere. There's a tiny little corn mold. It's about a quarter the size of the regular ones for the cornbreads. It's unusual. Beautiful rabbit fur. That's a rabbit fur coat. Or not rabbit, I'm sorry. Raccoon fur coat. What is my deal with animals? Hello, sir. Somehow, I see them. And these other... <laughs> I don't know what it is. Perhaps... I had this thought the other day when I was talking to somebody else about the fact that I don't say the correct animal's name. You know, remember that toy that we had when we were little ones that you pull the cord and it would spin around and then it would land on a particular animal and the animal would make a sound? I wonder if mine was broken. I wonder if, I wonder if as it would spin... Perhaps it would land on the wrong animal. Because there is something I have about, I see it, and then I say something totally different. It's a neat booth. And some really, really neat prim pieces in here. And it is so full. Packed so full. Yeah, this is a fun booth because it's just so full layer after layer so you really have to really need to look close at all these wonderful pieces it looks like a swift there the thing that the, they would wind the yarn on as they're either um, finishing up what they're spinning And more of those lovely hearts here. Big redware plate. Wow. Again, another looks like a peacock. Perhaps. Beautiful sampler there. Oh, and this one says it's made in Italy. Several coffee grinders there. Nice coverlet in the blue and white. When I'm out and about and if I'm at a place where I see maybe, I guess we call it in the wild, you know, where it's not necessarily in an antique shop, maybe it's a garage sale or an estate sale, I always look in the corners of the coverlets to see if the maker put his name or the date in the corner. And I know many years ago, my mom and dad found one for me. My first name is Gabriella, and they found a coverlet that was made by somebody whose first name was, it's either Gabrielle or Gabriella. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. So I look forward to having that out of being wrapped up and packed away when we finally move. I do have a couple of videos of updates on the house, so I'm not sure what order these will be coming out in. It's another lovely booth here, the nice early night shirt. It says it has the initials. See, that's one of the nice things with these tags. Looks like M. MG, MJ, maybe MS, not sure. Some unusual brooms there in the corner. An early rush light. 
Look at all those bowls. Nice little wooden lap desk for the days of laptops. So you sit in one of the one of the early chairs or Windsor chair and have that on your lap. This is a beautiful sawbuck table there. The horn beam. You know, I'd said before about how those were used for storage. No, they didn't have Rubbermaid totes and things like that. So there's a lovely pine dough box on legs. Very pretty. That'd be great behind a sofa, next to the sofa, as a, um, you know, behind in your kitchen. Pretty piece. And there's another one of those paintings that I mislabeled. Those are cows. See, I eventually get it right. The old piece for chopping. Pretty little cupboard here. All those pharmacy jars, it looks like. Love how the porch railings there are used as a kind of as a little room divider. You know, just a thought in your own home could be done that way. Like this cupboard right here. Nice deep. You could set it sideways and hang it if you wanted to. You know, it doesn't have to be up and down. It could be over the top of a of a doorway and put some crocs or things in it, something, you know, put it on top of a table at the back and then fill it with things also if it's sitting sideways. It sort of looks like a large uh, nesting box, maybe. There's another booth that's really full. That's what's so fun here is that every dealer has really their a, a unique way of displaying. They have their own specialties of the things that they have collected over the years. There's several of those drying racks up there, the sock dryers. Look at this pair is really a long pair. And then there's some small ones from the children. A heart foot warmer there. Another dough box there. Without the lid though. I need how the baskets are all hanging there. So, you know, maybe when you start you have one basket and you just add another and another. I had a message from someone and it really, it honestly really made me stop and think and consider before I answered. They asked me if you were just starting out in primitives, what would you get? What would you start with if you were just starting out? And I, it, I have really had to ponder that for a while and I can tell you how it started in my family and what piece or pieces were really the first pieces that I can think of that were brought home as primitives for our home and they were I wouldn't even necessarily say they were um, 
overly primitive at this point, but they were a couple of iron um, iron beds. And I had mine all through, um, I was probably in my late 40s when that was no longer my um, a bed in my home. We, we did end up selling that, just didn't have a place for it anymore. So it's on to its next home and loved. But if you found, you know, beds tend not to be terribly expensive. The early style beds, the rope beds, and you could get a rope bed. You want to measure it, make sure it is one that has been probably, possibly adjusted to be um, a size that fits a standard mattress. They don't all, so you do want to check on that. But once you have that bed in the bedroom, then you can accessorize with quilts, with coverlets, with some woven pieces of fabric. Um, you know, if there, if you even have a white duvet cover and then have some quilts layered on the end of the bed. And, you know, the, the fun thing about this style of decorating also is that you can, one, you can layer. You can add new pieces when you come upon them or when you find something that's better than the piece that you had before. You can either layer or you can trade up because there's always somebody out there who would love to buy that piece that um, for whatever reason now no longer fits in your home or in your style. So you can kind of think of these pieces in some ways as investment pieces because, you know, I'm not sure if you bought a brand new quilt at, I don't know, I've used their name before a couple times. If you bought a brand new quilt, let's say at Target, you know, and a week or two later you decide that's just not the color that you want, um, highly unlikely that you're going to be able to get that hundred or two hundred dollars back from that quilt in selling it. But if you bought an antique quilt and you did your homework and you found a nice one or you found an inexpensive one, chances are if you bought an antique quilt, let's say for fifty or a hundred dollars and you found a great deal, you're going to be able to sell that quilt again for fifty or a hundred possibly even make some money on it. So there is that when you're buying something. Now if you were looking for something in a room other than a bedroom, let's say you want to do your your main room, your great room, or your family room. Well then I would look at if you have, if your TV is hanging on the wall, if it's attached then that wouldn't work necessarily. But if it isn't, then I would look for an armoire or some kind of a cupboard that you could put that TV in. Because once you have that hidden away in that early looking style, even if it isn't an old one, if you found something in that style, you could paint it. You could paint it one of the early New England, early American paint colors, either a mustard or a red or um, go with the farmhouse and do it in the black. And then again with the layering. So then your fabrics, your pillows, um, some quilts, either folded, you could hang a quilt on a wall behind the couch or lay it over the back of your couch. I really do think that sometimes it's those fabrics, those they add a warmth and they do change they do change the look of your space from possibly the contemporary looking style to the primitive so even if your furniture isn't in the primitive style that doesn't mean that you can't add those kind of accessories that are going to make 
that room have that kind of a vibe or that feeling. And th I think that's one of the things that's so much fun about, you know, places like Seville Antiques, because you have every level of pricing here in this shop. You have very specialized high-end dealers. And you also have dealers who, me for instance, I like having my items in my booth. I like my booth to flip fast. So if I find something for a great price, I'm not going to put a retail price on it. I am going to make my profit, which everybody wants to make some money, right? I mean, this is really, nobody's going to get rich doing this. This is a labor of love. This is holding on to these pieces and getting them into the hands of people. You know, people who like to, to hunt for the find. It's sort of like, um, you know, when you see people that stand in line to get the lottery tickets. Well, that's sort of what it feels like for for me anyway, standing in line outside of an estate sale, not knowing necessarily all that's inside that door and what I might find. The same for an old barn and those kind of things. But there are all manner of prices here. So if you want to come and spend, uh, you know, thousands, you can do that. You can do that in all of the shops that I've shown. But if you want to come and spend 20, you can do that too. There's always something here that is every manner of price. And I think that also helps to start a collection. Because, especially in a place like this, you know that these pieces have been found by dealers, people who know this, this stuff, this, this look. And so if you're, if you're curious and it's something that you want to get started in collecting, then I would honestly urge you to start in some of the really nice antique shops and get an idea of what your um, what your style or what you want to collect maybe it's your kitchen that you want to prim up maybe it'll start with a wooden bowl and some uh, tin cookie molds or maybe it's a new coffee table that is a wooden trunk There's one with beautiful stenciling, painting. Top one has like a grain paint on it. It's a beautiful Crocs. You know, you can do Crocs that are the stoneware Crocs uh, with the cobalt that will be several hundred dollars. Or you can do uh, the redware Crocs that are in the 20s and 30s and 40s of dollars. So that I think is such a fun part of the primitive world and the primitive collections because you can bring you can bring a little piece of something home, add it to your home and display it in so many different ways. There's a quilt. This one has names of people written in the center. So it's some sort of a memory or maybe a family baker, maybe a family piece. So I hope that helps. I hope, um, you know, if you have questions or if you have suggestions, you know, I hope our page does um, get comments that others maybe will come to it and 
and look at it and review it and, and read all those comments too. If you know of or think of something that you would think would be a great thing to start with as a, to start that primitive style, please don't hesitate to say so in the comments. more oh my goodness look at all the hearts in this booth that's a standing drying rack very cool those are neat for for herbs here's one of those cookie cookie cutters that would be neat hanging on a wall or you know take a, a window pane like she has here and feature a couple of different things and suddenly you have an accent wall in your home that um, has that prim look. There's a gray and red coverlet on the wall. For a wonderful price. Beautiful chest of drawers. You know, I think you'd be hard pressed if you went to a um, new furniture store to find a solid piece of furniture with inset drawers and that special beading around the outside, brass hardware, and get it for that price. I am just looking at this kind of closely. Are those, those are thistles on those handles. Are you kidding me? Those are thistles. Oh my. Hmm. Well, Michelle and I may need to have a talk. <laughs> that is really cool. I've got to think where in our home, where might that go? Oh, it's so hard when it's not Oh, I'm just not quite up yet. I mean, it's there, but once furniture gets into it, then it'll be a lot easier to figure out what else we may want here and there. But that is a neat piece. I didn't realize that before, that that had knobs of thistles. My goodness. This is such a neat booth here also. Those pantry boxes. Pretty cupboard. That's a big cupboard. That's a great price. You know, you just save a little bit and all of a sudden the next thing you know you've got a couple hundred dollars and you stop into an antique shop and load up your car. Neat wooden box with a hook to close the front. Very sweet. Portrait, mother and daughters, called Lessons. You know, that may be behind a couch in a bedroom. Again, there's a blanket crane up there with a quilt hanging on it. So, so many options, so many choices. Baskets are another one. Baskets at one time were really very, very expensive of the primitive baskets. The price on those has um, really unfortunately in some ways has dropped. Great if you're a buyer, um, if you had a huge collection of them and you bought at the height of the market, then maybe not so much. There's some rye baskets. That looks really sharp there. There's a neat little little cross stitch and that one says 1862 something school February 20 February 24th 1862. That is tomorrow. Wow. 1862. Here's a nice big bowl with lots of cookie cutters. 
looks like a sheep, maybe. Animal cutter. Very cool. You know, a coffee, coffee grinder on a on a kitchen counter, and you've started a primitive look. Get some um, towels in a plaid or a woven style, and you've added to that look in your kitchen. There's a neat. Neat hanging shelf piece with some measures and neat old box. The vanilla boxes there were from, from in a mercantile. There are some things that I personally collect and the spice boxes and baking style, baking item boxes is something that I personally collect. I do have a vanilla box though, otherwise those would be coming home with me. The room back here. The shop just goes on and on. Like I said, there's over 5,000 square feet. Just, just full. Some old fashioned lye soap. Some early, early children's dresses or pinafores, slips, nice tin. Is that maybe copper at the bottom? Yep, could be copper on the bottom. You know, put that on your on your stove top with a um, maybe a, a breadboard or a, a noodle board on top of your stove. And all of a sudden, your your um, again your kitchen changes from a contemporary look. Some hooked rugs here. Very fancy painted blue door with the yellow. I don't know if that's maybe trying to mimic bird's eye maple, I would say. It's probably the intention there. Ray's school, aged 10 years. 10 years old. 1848. I, I just. Mary Jane Ridd worked at Lady Ray's school, age 10 years. That is just amazing work for a 10 year old from 1848. Beautiful. It's an early petticoat. It's a winter one, I would imagine. It's heavier than that. It's shiny fabric on the inside, almost like a chintz type fabric. A watercolor painting there on the wall. So we'll come on up this way. And look at this neat wooden child's toy. And now most definitely a piece that's precious for adults. The 
another boot jack. That's neat in the red, white, and blue. And when you first come in the door here at Seville Antiques, well, can I make it happen? I don't know where the bell is. There it is. That's the famous sound when you first walk in the door at Seville Antiques. Just beautifully decorated hair in the front too. All these wonderful early prim finds. That neat red cupboard. Beautiful. Nice scrub top table with that teal green bluish sort of color. Love it. Judge best. Huh. Not sure what that is advertising for. It's a neat early store display. So the back is all the glass and you can kind of see the waviness in the glass and then the the hole in the top and the the flip lid there. Nice early rocker. A child's desk and a big enterprise coffee grinder. Wow, great price on that. I love that. That picture with the cow. <laughs> I know my Joe and Jenny are listening. They're waiting for me. I don't know. To call a cow a, a donkey or a rooster or something. I hope you can hear me with that heater fan going on in the back. We've had such strange weather here in northeastern Ohio. We have Seven degree, 70 degree weather today, and I think by tomorrow morning it's supposed to be in the 30s, maybe? Crazy. Some of those hog scraper candlesticks, the little skater's lanterns, and then this lovely early sheep oil painting. So sweet. Some quilts, little mincemeat bucket there in the corner. Do you like mincemeat? I personally love it. My great grandmother, would, or my grandmother actually, I think, would make mincemeat pie. I don't remember them baking or cooking anything much else that was good, but the mincemeat pie was good. Mincemeat pie and poppy seed roll were highlights. Meatloaf, not so much. <laughs> Pretty corner here. I think that's the other thing with primitive decorating is that there's layers. There's pieces on top of other pieces and there's exterior pieces from outside that are inside. Look at the little footstool and there's a concrete sheep on top. And you could have that sitting in front of your little Windsor chair. And if you were into primitives and you knew people who were, no one would even think twice about that because that's just how, how it goes. We just love that, that layering. And these pieces often were rescued from outside. And so when they were rescued from outside, now they're They've done their service, and now it's time to treasure them inside and protect them. There's an interesting nitty knotty with a kind of a blue, that's got a blue paint on it. You can see that where, for where her hands would have held it. Pretty, pretty color. 
some silhouettes there, some fireplace of cooking pieces, really early tin candle sconce. This is Deborah Priest's booth. The one across the way there is Grace Brock. Grace and John. There's a birdcage chair. That's beautiful. So many people have commented on this beautiful turquoisey blue green color of this dry sink. It is stunning. It is pretty against this dark, moody background color and it would be gorgeous against a light white or alabaster color walls as well. This would really pop. There's another dry sink also. That one has the open front with the shelves instead of one like this where it has the doors on it. I had one of those moments. This shop has um, an apartment above it. So for a minute there, I was thinking that there was somebody behind the wall. <laughs> but they're walking upstairs. They're not inside the shop. Beautiful sheet there. It's such a pretty display here. Those Tommy sticks, the candles that you can put into a into a beam or something into the wall so that you could light the candle wherever it is that you need one. You need that light. It's a whole collection of crocks and bowls. Some very vivid blue cobalt decorated German pieces. Some redware. I think they're called Turkish hats. The bunt pans. A nice collection of the wall boxes here. That beautiful grain painted blanket box. Oh my, if you could see these pink tags that I am seeing. Look at that wall box there with the punched. That one says 1881 in the punchings. Love these paintings. Dated 1800. Fractor. Sarah Smith. March 3rd, 1800. This one's so sweet with a cat, the children. And she has probably a tussy mussy, a little flower arrangement in her hand. And the child painting with the 
jump rope. I knew it would come to me. It's a neat bowl, burl bowl there. Again, several of the fabrics, coverlets, and these are po these pockets. Um, pockets weren't uh, sewn into the skirts. They would have been uh, tied on, actually, around their waists, and then they would wear their pockets outside of their skirts and on top. Such pretty pieces. So let's go ahead and walk back. There was something else I wanted to show you in my booth real quick uh, before we wrap this up. And ooh, look at that. You're kind of seeing the way I see. Look at the fancy P engraved into the side of that little carrier. That is lovely. Is there anything engraved on the other side? Nope. Very pretty. A little wool winder, yarn winder here on the end. Again, more of these coverlets. They can be in so many different colors. They're uh, traditionally in that blue and cream color background. You can have multicolors, which would have been a big deal for the weaver to have changed the colors. So like this one has the cream color background, and then it has the red, the blue, sort of that wine color, a green. Very pretty. I do have more of these runners. Um, right now, the ones that I'm showing right here, these are all the short runners. I've got, well, there's different, um, so many different styles of the, of the pattern, but the short runners here are all $12 a piece. There's a short one here underneath, again, underneath this beautiful early bobbin winder that was probably from about 1780. Got another one of these woven pieces. I do have some of the longer ones as well. This one's a 34 inch square. And I have sold so many of those. I want to try to get in a lot of them so that if you ask me for a I do have a mustard in the 34 inch at home that I meant to bring in with me and forgot. So if you are interested in one of those, uh, just let me know. Because those are so easy, easy to ship. Um, here's another one of the reds of a long, yeah, the long ones. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is I have one so the first comment that comments on it and asks for it, I have one of the heart, heart on springs left. Uh, my mom made several more and then now we're down to one again. I know that she is working on others. Um, I do have a gourd uh, spinner, gourd garland that I just brought into the shop. And then something else that's really kind of fun to do Especially, I'm sure this is not the end of winter. Um, it's just that that fake spring that we're having right now. But I do have these allspice garland kits. That uh, those are eighteen dollars a piece, and you can have enough in there to make um, probably about three, approximately fifty inch garlands. And the secret trick for how to make them is inside. You have to unfold. The label is on the front of the bag. Um, you unfold that and the instructions for how to do it are underneath that. So, um, But everything that you need, everything that you need to make those 
um, is essentially in this bag. Even the, the thread, and even the needle. So if you were interested in any of those, those are $18 each. And those are really a neat, fun wintertime project when you're sitting down watching TV, maybe watching some girl on YouTube doing antique shop videos. That'd be fun to do. So, all right. If you have any questions, comment down below. Share. There's nothing better than sharing these videos on your social media pages for us. Um, it really helps. Um, it really helps get the word out about these wonderful shops here in Ohio. Um, it helps more people see our videos. It helps YouTube show our videos to you. And actually, the other thing that it does is that when when you share ours and when you comment on our videos, it does help bring more of this style of video into your feed. So it actually helps you as well. It, it tells YouTube what you like to see, and then um, it will show you and bring you more of that style of video. So, so I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope uh, you are enjoying the weather wherever you are. And I hope if you haven't already been to Seville Antiques that you do um, make the plan to head here at some point in the near future. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.